Good morning. It's Wednesday, October 28th, and as you can see, we still have snow. Uh, I actually just walked out to the field. Um, it's dried off some. Uh, it's actually about 10 o'clock in the morning at this point. Uh, I worked on some stuff inside earlier this morning. Um, but there's still snow in the field. I mean, you can see over here in the corner, uh, there's nothing to block that from the morning sun at all. And uh, definitely still snow. Um, so I'm thinking it's probably going to be an early afternoon, or sorry, mid-afternoon type start on seeding cover crops. Best case. Um, but we've got a few things that we can work on. Uh, I need to get the weights bolted on on the front of the tractor here. Uh, need to check the four-wheeler and see what the situation is um, with the fuel pump replacement, if that solved the gas going down, or if I'm going to have to do something with that. that um, I suspect the latter, but haven't looked yet. I probably should shovel on some grain bins to work on getting them leveled off if I get ambitious. I need, I need to work on shoveling some grain bins if I can find ambition somewhere. something to do with the deal on the injection pump that's supposed to keep it from smoking in normal operation. It's kind of a weird deal. Let me get this lifted up a little higher. So I'm going to pull this around to the shop, get the uh, toolbar in the sunshine where the semi-frozen corn residue and dirt and everything else that we got on it there last week can hopefully thaw out a little bit. This is going to be the moment of truth. Have we lost gas overnight? Yes, although very little, um, but it's going down, which means it's probably going into the crankcase. So looks like I'm going to try to get something ordered to work on that petcock. Got the tractor pulled in front of the shop and sort of looking things over. I think what I'm going to try to do is basically, so I need to be able to clamp these weights together. And for some reason, the two on the left here are sitting different than the other four. And I'm not sure if that's a casting uh, variation. Like maybe the four on the right came out of a different line than the others, or I don't know. Um, but anyway, the idea here is that we're going to squeeze everything together. Um, so basically there's a slot here at the top and a slot at the bottom. And the way that it was done before, there was two bolts through there, one from each direction. But since we're not putting all the weights on, so far at least, um, the bolts are too long, they don't have enough thread. So what we need to do is basically make a spacer to take up the gap between the head of the bolt and the washer that pushes against the uh, inner weight, or outer weight. Um, and don't have a lot of appropriate stock for that, but found some leftover uh, EMT from when we wired the bins a year ago. Um, that I think will serve the purpose fine for what we need. Uh, I'm probably am going to have to find some washers, but I'm pretty sure I have some washers. They're not metric, but should work. Um, and basically sort of use some cheap metal tubing to see how it's going to work and how much weight I actually need up front. Um, this is the only thing really that we do with this tractor where we have a mounted implement. Um, so for tillage, I mean, for doing anhydrous and disking and field cultivating, like, probably we don't really need any front weight, but a little weight would be okay, um, just to get a little bit more traction. Um, but the issue is, since this is on the three-point and it weighs a whole bunch, like, this toolbar is probably 7,000 pounds, I would guess, um, when you pick that up, basically, you twist around the rear axle, so your, your weight here pushing down takes weight off the front end and then you don't have traction to be able to steer. Um, so with a tractor you have independent right and left brakes so you can sort of ride the inner, ride the brake on the inside wheel to get turned around even when that happens. Um, but definitely 
would be safer and more pleasant and probably the auto steer might work a little better um, if you have a little better uh, traction on the front end. So that's what we're trying to remedy here today. Um, with the planter, it doesn't pull hard enough that we need weight at all and we really don't want the weight uh, because we want as little compaction as possible. Um, I am hoping that this is enough weight to do what we need to because probably this is something that we can handle getting on and off in one chunk. Um, so these are 220 pounds a piece, so we're 12, 1300 pounds right now. Um, and probably that's more within the capabilities of what we have to pick stuff up than the full 2200 would be. Um, so let's make some spacers. So this is what we're going to make, uh, it should be 6 inches long if I measured right, um, need 3 more. This is galvanized so I'm kind of trying not to breathe a lot of the fumes. I don't know that cutting it is as big of a risk as welding but um, basically the coating contains, I believe it's zinc, um, that is somewhat poisonous uh, when it's vaporized to humans. Um, so you kind of want to be real careful if you're ever welding on galvanized and probably I'm going to try not to huff too much of the smoke coming off of the saw blade here today either. We've got our spacers rigged up. Um, trying to figure out what's going on with these weights. What it really looks like is that there's three of these that aren't seated all the way down. Um, I'm not sure why. Um, I mean, you would think that 220 pounds a piece, they would go down as far as possible, but because a lot of the weight is out here, basically, I think if you get them pinched right, they'll just sit there. So I think I'm going to have to sort of wrangle these apart far enough that I can wiggle them up and down and get them to seat all the way and then wrangle them back together, which is a fun time. Um, 220 pounds a piece, uh, I can move them, but it's not easy. Uh, and they're awkward and definitely a hazard of pinching fingers, and I like my fingers. Um, so, I'll turn the camera back on in a few minutes, hopefully with all 10 digits intact. Weights are on. Um, I wrestled with them for a while and then sort of gave up and just put the bolts through and used them to squeeze the weights together. They're still not sitting perfect. Um, these center ones are a little high. You can really see that on the bottom. <coughs> Um, the bolts that hold the rack onto the bracket work with six where they wouldn't work with four. Um, so we're going to try it and see how it acts. Um, probably going to keep an eye on it because I'm guessing that after it uh, bounces through the field for a while some things might realign and things will need to be tightened down again. I may actually run a wire around these bolts to make sure if they loosen up I don't lose them in the middle of the field. Um, but I think we're more or less ready to go, um, see how it acts and if we need to put a couple more on, we will. Uh, I think the next project that I'm going to work on, um, so basically I'll harvest the grain saver, which is the little pan on the end of the auger there, so it pivots down basically when there's grain coming out and then it's spring loaded to pull it back up so that corn doesn't, corn or soybeans or whatever grain doesn't dribble out as you're going across the field and the hinge on that is screwed up so I think I'm going to see if I can get a ladder over here and get the apparatus for that pulled off um, so that we can see about getting a hinge to replace that and get it welded up and put back on before it goes in the shed for the winter so that I don't forget about it. Well at least there's one piece of the hinge that's still there. Um, I think the only way you, the only thing you can buy from John Deere is the whole assembly. So probably what is going to happen here is we're going to cut the welds and go find a hinge at the hardware store and stick it back together. It's about 1:30 now. Um, still a little bit of snow. Uh, some sort of a winter annual. I think that maybe is Penny Cress. might be mare's tail, but I think the leaves or the stems, petioles, are a little too long. 
Um, so there's still a fair amount of snow out here. Um, we're still plenty wet. Um, the stalks are getting dried out decent. Um, the big problem at the moment is that guy. It's supposed to be mostly sunny, but not a lot of cloud. I mean, more clouds than mostly sunny, I would say. So probably it's going to be a little bit before we try to do anything on the cover crops. Um, if the forecast looked like it was going to turn on me, I would probably run now, but I think we've got at least the rest of this week to do stuff. And Friday especially looks nice. So if I can get a little bit done late this afternoon, get a decent amount done tomorrow and finish up on Friday, I think that'll work out fine. And probably the longer I give this stuff to sort of dry out a little bit on top and get the last of the snow melted, the better things are going to work. So uh, that gives me a good, well, not a good, a reason, no excuses for avoiding shoveling. So I'm going to drag a green scoop up to the top of this bin, put on a dust mask, and get a little bit of a workout. Well, I wouldn't call it perfect, but it's a lot better than it was. Um, when I crawled up here, I really thought that I had leveled it out more than it looked like I had when I did this stuff last week. Um, but another half hour, 45 minutes of unwanted cardio, and we're probably even enough that we can turn the fan on and kind of push a little bit of air through this for a few days here, and uh, at least do more good than harm or not do harm, hopefully. Um, probably, I'll keep an eye on it as it dries. It's probably not warm enough that it's going to dry down very quickly, um, even if we run the fan continuously, and probably I'm just going to run it during the daytime when the relative humidity is a little bit on the lower side. Um, but we'll have to keep an eye on it. Um, my suspicion is there may be wetter corn in the bottom center than the bottom outer edge. So as that dries, it's possible that the center will, sh I mean, as grain dries, it shrinks. And if that's actually the case, that there is some wetter grain down there in the middle, um, it may sink in the middle. Um, but I wanted to make sure that we did, at least didn't have uh, a lot higher grain here because in that case, like probably the air would never go through that very well. It would just go to the drier grain on the outside and skip the, the higher resistance in the middle. Um, as it is now, I think we're, maybe 15 feet of grain height or so, and I would say we're within a foot, I would guess, more or less, as far as uh, the depth of the pile. So on a percentage basis, that's not a huge amount. And my hope is that the air would go through relatively evenly at this point. You know, I've been thinking, those CrossFit people like to throw around uh, big agricultural tires. I wonder if I could like start a chain of self-service gyms and charge people to shovel grain bins level. I mean, win-win, right? They get some exercise and I get a level bin. We could even do just do like free trials the first two weeks of November every year. Might be working on a logo over the winter. Since I'm kind of waiting on it to dry off a little bit to start seeding cover crops, I thought this would be a good chance to come over and check on our uh, rapeseed broadcast test a little bit. Um, mostly was curious if stuff was still alive, which it looks like it mostly is. Um, you can see some of these leaves are getting a little bleached out, uh, which I have a feeling might be due to it getting cold, um, but I'm not entirely sure. Uh, it got quite cold here Monday night, but there might have been some snow cover that might have given them a little bit of insulation. Um, but seem to have decent growth still. Um, not sure that I'm brave enough to do this type of a thing on every acre I farm yet, but I don't know. If I had a way to do some without having to pay an airplane and without tearing the crop up too badly, it seems like a promising enough test that it might be worth trying on a slightly larger scale. Um, I don't see anything growing on any of the other strips, so basically where these pink flags are, 
was kind of like the center of where I walked out and back. So there should be, you know, roughly this type of a strip where I did some other stuff too. So this one would have been the buckwheat, which seemed like it died off really early. Uh, probably not very frost resistant. So when we got the early frost, it seemed like that finished off the ones that did germinate. Uh, I do not see any growth on either of the clover strips. Continue to keep an eye on that. Um, there is an off chance that stuff could still come up later this fall or even in the spring. Um, but definitely not a living root in the ground now as far as I can see. Um, don't see much here either. I think a lot of the guys having success with clover are actually planting it into the soybeans uh, earlier in the season and getting it sort of under the soybean canopy so as the soybeans die, the clover can kind of take off. Uh, I don't know that I have the equipment to really do that at the moment. Well, I maybe could if I did 30 inch soybeans and used the Hinecar to seed clover, but I don't know. The rapeseed is interesting. I'm gonna have to do some more thinking about that. Since the sunshine continues to be rather sporadic and the ground is still pretty wet on top, uh, I think we're gonna clean up some wagons a little bit. So I'm gonna get the pressure washer hooked up and wash these guys down as good as I can, try to get all the stuff that's stuck to the undersides cleaned off a little bit. And uh, hopefully this way they'll have a couple days to be able to dry out in the sun and make sure there's no water uh, sitting anywhere when they go into the shed for the winter. Also, it would appear there's enough grain in here that it's trapping some water. Uh, it was dripping off the backside when I pulled the wagon up here. Um, so we're going to see what happens when we open the gate here. Probably we're going to get a little bit of chicken feed. Ooh, there's even some snow on top. That's fun. Probably not enough to cause too much trouble. Um, the other reason that I'd like to get this done today is that I'd like to get stuff cleaned up so the uh, slope and usually the inside of the front slope here, front slope, side slope, I don't know what you call that exactly, um, the paint will wear off like where the grain flows to come out the chute. Um, and I'd like to shoot some paint on that just to kind of make sure that it stays relatively slick um, for the future and I can't have it be wet when I do that. So uh, that's probably on the docket for this week here sometime too. Or, well, we'll see what the forecast looks like in a couple days for next week. There's one wagon, mostly clean. Got the snow and ice cleaned out of the uh, bottom of the box. And I think we're ready to clean up number two. Probably this one's gonna get tied up pretty quick. Hey. Somebody likes water a little too much, I think. Two cleanish wagons. This one's a little bit older than the other two, and you can tell. Um, always been stored inside, but I think they must have improved the paint. Um, because this one seems like it's always been kind of chalky or lighter colored. Definitely thinner on the inside of the box. Um, and they, I hope, improved the decals a little bit too because these haven't uh, weathered very well. Do you want a tide? I turned the pressure washer off. No more water.
Alright, so unless I see any spots that I missed, I think we're ready to pull these out and let them sit. Uh, I didn't wash the inside of the box on this one because we didn't use it the last day when it was raining. So it shouldn't really be too dirty, I don't think. Um, it'll let things get dried off and then touch up a few spots um, just to get some paint on some of that bare metal where the paint's worn off. And I think stick them in the shed after that. I'm uh, out in the stock field at the home farm now, kind of seeing what things look like. Um, it seems like most of the residue is fairly crunchy. Uh, ground is still pretty wet. Um, I think I'm going to go try it and see how it goes. It's not sloppy wet. So as long as I can sort of cut through most of the residue, probably I won't do too much harm. Um, for the most part, any compaction that I cause at this point should freeze out over the winter. And I don't think the sun's really supposed to shine tomorrow. It's really quite a few years of corn on the ground right here. It might have been some overlap and some stuff that didn't stand very well because we're sort of some passes that come together and some odd rows right here, so probably not super surprising. I think this hybrid didn't stand spectacularly either, so that may be part of it. Definitely didn't yield as well as some of the stuff in the other parts of the field. So case in point of why I said clean-ish wagons, um, they're never actually as clean as they look like when they're wet. Always some dirty spots. We're closing in on 6 o'clock. Um, still not mostly sunny in my opinion, but we're getting some seeding done. Uh, it's a little wetter than I would like. We're picking up a little bit of stuff um, on the tires. Not enough to really matter, I don't think. Um, but if we pick up a lot of stuff, especially on the tire will be on the left side of the thing but the right side in the video um, that's the one that drives the rate control stuff um, so if that's a bigger diameter then you end up putting on a lower rate but uh, seem to be getting through things fine um, although there are things that I don't love about this toolbar I've never had it plug up and I like that that's not ever been a problem um, I've been doing some auto steer. Mostly I've been planning like little contour rows because I figured if the conditions were not exactly fit, um, it would be a good chance to do the stuff that wasn't going to be highly productive anyway. Um, but was doing some straight passes here to kind of get some headlands on some more short rows and had the steering veer off hard left again. Um, and finally we decided to go in so this has a paradigm uh is like what the steering well it's what the gps system is i think the steering may be considered a paradigm also i don't remember exactly how that all works but anyway um basically my suspicion was i had something going on with the wheel angle sensor so i went into the actual paradigm menu which is basically the stuff on the gps receiver on the roof but i can access it through the monitor um, and basically, uh, it was reading the value that it would be clear to the right when the wheel was clear to the left. So I think the GPS system was trying to turn right, but it thought the wheels were turned, or sorry, it was, yeah, trying to turn right, but it thought the wheels were turned all the way right or something. I don't know. Anyway, I might have to think through what's going wrong but in any case it seems like the issue is the wheel angle sensor um, I was able to disconnect and reconnect it and it seems to be working at the moment so we'll see how it acts um, I was a little suspicious of that um, partly because I've seen it do some weird things when I've tried to calibrate in the past and also I know that um, the plug stays plugged in but the housing on the actual sensor is kind of broken so the latch part where the weather pack connector plugs in um, is not exactly there anymore um, so we'll kind of see how it acts um, it seems like there are some wrinkles to auto steering on this uh, super steer axle anyway 
and I would like to kind of work on that sometime, which might be a fall project here if we have some decent weather. Um, once we get the cover crops on, or maybe in the mornings when it's not fit to really go on the cover crops yet, I don't know. But anyway, uh, maybe solve that mystery. We're gonna see how it acts. Um, so I'm gonna probably do a couple more passes just to kind of see how that is, and then do some more short stuff up here, and then probably call it an item not going to try to run real late I don't think at least not after dark um, because the conditions aren't really great anyway and probably the less sunshine the tougher all of the stocks and everything is going to be and it looks like we have at least a couple days yet that'll be nice so anyway that's where we're at Anything, so that's good. 